Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Today I wanted to talk about the Rockford Fosgate speaker lid kit and the Boss Audio speaker lid kit. For the longest time, uh, Rockford was the only player in the game where you can get a lid kit for your Harley Davidson motorcycle. So it's a cut in lid kit which allows you to use your factory lids. Then you cut the kit in, allows you to add six mines to factory saddlebag lids that had no speakers on them at all. The Rockwood kit was very popular. It was the only game in town for a long time. And then a few others jumped into the game, like uh, uh, Sounds makes their own lid kit, nice high quality kit. Um, cut in lid kit 702 motoring came out with their version of the kit which allows you to use any speaker that you want boss came out with theirs just recently and I'm pretty sure I'm missing one I thought there was one more company that made a lid kit oh dirty bird offers a lid kit but um the dirty bird one doesn't really look factory so the big players in the game when it came to factory looking lid kit was Rockford Fosgate and sounds and now Boss threw their hat into the ring. Uh, a lot of people laugh at the Boss lid kit because Boss is known for doing some shady stuff when it comes to audio and overrating the power of their amplifiers and claiming that they're 300 watt amplifiers, 3000 watts and stuff like that. So they did a good job with the lid kit. Honestly, I have no idea how they're not getting sued by Rockford. Maybe Rockford is building the kit for them. I have no clue. Don't quote me on it. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But the similarities are too crazy. And then when I made it on the website and I checked, when you compare the Boss Audio complete um, amplifier installation kit that comes with the lid kit, the speakers, it looks identical to the Rockford kit. Even comes with three speaker grills for the front for the Harley Davidson. So. You're talking amplifier mounting plate, which looks identical to the Rockford plate. The amplifier itself even has Rockford style plugs on it. That's what made me look it up because the wiring harnesses that come in the kit have Rockford style Molex connectors. So that's what made me go on the website and look to see what kind of connectors their amplifiers use and they're exactly the same. So, I don't know if they have some sort of partnership with Rockford, and Rockford is building this for them. The only difference in the kit that I've seen is the speakers. So, the part that you see, the grills, look identical. Obviously, the logo is going to be different. Grills look identical. Only difference I saw in the grills is the Rockford has a gloss and the boss has a matte finish but the grills the gasket the way they're put together i'm talking identical 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 so then we move over to the mounting brackets once again identical in every way they even bring the same exact screws one difference i did notice the rockford kit offers a gasket where the 6x9 sits on the kit itself the boss does not there's no gasket so if we were to use the boss kit I would feel safer lining the front edge with foam tape that would make it a watertight seal it's got a watertight seal on top but where the 6x9 meets the kit doesn't have it so one point for Rockford on that this is where it gets super strange so these are the cutout templates, as you can see identical. The Boss one is red, the Rockford one is black. The only difference I see in the template is three mounting holes to hold it down versus two. Everything else is the same. Now this I found comical. So the Boss speaker 
and the Rockford speaker both have a keyed flange. So there's a second hole next to the mounting hole in the upper right hand corner. See it there, and you see it there. The Boss speaker has it, the Rockford speaker has it, so it would make sense that in the Rockford kit, the speaker locks into that flange and it lines the speaker up perfectly. The Boss speaker has it, but the Boss kit doesn't have that keyed flange. So the speaker actually slides around and you got to figure out where it bolts in. Now this is the part I find comical. If you put the Boss speaker on the Rockford mounting kit, it locks into the flange perfectly. See that? Doesn't move. That flange right there. Weird that the boss speaker has it and it lines up the Rockford one, but the boss kit does not have it. Strange. Now here's where the huge differences come in. Boss speaker, Rockford speaker. The boss has a giant ferrite magnet. Doesn't mean it's more powerful because ferrite is larger and cheaper and requires a bigger magnet to create the same exact amount of force as a neomagnet, one third the size. So, huge difference in magnet size. I got my money on the Rockford. Huge difference in build quality. The glue on the edge of the surround to keep water out of the tweeter is nice and a perfect bead. The one on the bow speaker, on the boss speaker, it looks like a kindergartner did it. There's glue leaking out all over the place. Just very unprofessional looking. The Rockford one's nice and neat. So obviously, the quality and attention to detail, Rockford, much better. The glue's just thrown all over the cone on the boss speaker. Um, we're gonna have to do a test because when we go by the numbers, boss claims to handle more power, but Rockford claims 100 watts RMS, 56 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Makes sense. Boss claims 150 watts RMS, but that also depends where you check. On the paperwork that came with it, it said 150 watts. When I checked the website, it claimed 175 watts. So it claims 150 watts because it plays from 70 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So less mid bass, more power handling. Completely makes sense. But if you go on the website, they claim 175 watts RMS, 50 hertz, which 6 hertz lower than the Rockford, to 20,000 hertz. I call bullshit on that. There's no way you're going to make the speaker cheaper, more efficient, because the Rockford speakers claim an efficiency of 89 dB. Of course, the Boss speakers claim an efficiency of 93. So it's claiming to be more efficient, according to the website, play lower, According to the website, handle 75 watts more. And I can't compare voice coils because Rockford told me there's a 1.4 inch. Nowhere in the paperwork or the website could I find a voice coil diameter for the boss speaker. So we're going to have to test it. I'm going to load them each into six mine boxes. I'm going to put them, put 400 watts of RMS to each one. I don't think it's going to work out too good for the boss speaker. But hey, maybe it'll surprise me. Um, we've already tested the Rockford on that power and the speaker absolutely jams. Sounds great on that power. Uh, what else? Uh, moving on to the manuals. Boss has a color manual with some color pictures. They're not good pictures, they're just color. But the install instructions are terrible. I even found a mistake in the manual. So, the reason I knew it was a mistake, the Rockford manual is boring and black and white, but at least it's accurate. 
it has the dimensions it's got very accurate install instructions even right re makes recommendations on how to protect your bags so you don't scratch them so what made me double check the manual was the harnesses that come with the kit are completely identical they even have the same part number which means they came out of the same factory so the part number on the rear speaker harness is 15606203801 on the Rockford and is exactly the same on the Boss. On the Boss, part number is 15606203901. Same part number. And the other side is 03801. Rockford rear 038 and the other one 039 same exact harnesses even says clutch side brake side even says clutch side brake side so when I'm reading the manual the Rockford one tells me to drill a three-quarter inch hole To run the grommet through the saddlebag. The boss manual told me to drill a 5 16 hole and when I checked the grommet is three-quarter just like the Rockford. So it's a mistake in the manual. Both come with the same exact harness, same sleeving, same tech flex, same identical harnesses. So these are a little bit different. These are the same. Speakers are different. Even comes with a basket to go over the back of the speaker to protect your valuables in your bag from touching the hot magnet of the speaker. Rockford does the same thing. So I don't know if Rockford is building the kit for Boss. The only difference in the two kits is literally the speakers. The wire harness is the same, wire plugs are the same, the templates are the same, the, even the damn mounting screws are the same. Same exact mounting screws on both. So, the Rockford kit is five hundred and thirty dollars retail. The Boss kit is two ninety nine retail, and I think the price might have just went up a little bit because I was on the website and I noticed the price was now three hundred twenty eight dollars. So, we'll call it a two hundred dollar difference: five twenty versus three twenty. So we'll call it a $200 difference. Um, as far as the fit and finish, to make the Boss kit as waterproof as the Rockford kit, I would add double-sided foam tape along this edge, like Rockford does on theirs. Notice this one does not have it, so it's plastic on plastic. This one does have it. That was the only difference I noticed between the two kits. We're going to go ahead and cut it into our demo bags that we have in the showroom to make sure that the fit and finish is what it appears to be. And then we're going to load these into some 6 iron boxes and do some tests because I believe that Boss is exaggerating the specifications on their speakers like they do with all their equipment. I um, want you guys to take a second and go on the Boss Audio website. I want you guys to see the similarities. It's bossaudio.com. Click on the motorcycle audio. I want you guys to see the similarities between the speakers and the amplifier. That looks like an exact copy of the Rockford amplifier. I don't know how Boss is getting away with that. I don't know what kind of deal they made with Rockford, but whatever. That's nothing to do with us. I'm just here to provide information and knowledge. So let me go upstairs, load these speakers up to the enclosure, and see if I can get a sound test going. 
Okay, I ran the test literally 10 times. Ran the test 10 times, switched amplifier channels to make sure the output was the same on both channels. You're not gonna believe how close this was. Like, I thought Rockford was just gonna walk all over the boss six by nine. It was super duper duper close. So, boss is known for making some shady claims and some outrageous power claims. They did a good job with this 6x9 speaker. Like, um, this 6x9, for the price, wow, is all I can say is wow. You already know I love the Rockford 6x9. I, uh, I think people give it a hard time and they judge it because they don't use it in the proper application. I think the Rockford lid kit has a lot of value and I think that speaker, we've done it. We've done the Rockford 6x9 lid kit on a sound digital 800.4 bridge. So we're sending 400 watts to each 6x9. DSR1, DSP, proper tune. The thing sings, you get awesome mid bass. Speakers don't blow, they sound great. People are running these things without a DSP and sending 100 clip watts to him, blowing the 6x9 up and saying it's a piece of crap and then putting a stronger 6x9 in. Just because another 6x9 can handle your clip signal doesn't mean it's a better speaker. It just means the voice code can take more heat. So how about you drop a DSP on it, tune it properly, and then judge the damn speaker. But uh, okay, check out this test. I made it as close as I could, as fair as I could. So I want you, when the bass drops, I want you to see the dots all the way to the left. I want you to see how high they go up. That's the meter telling you how much, how loud the bass is that frequency. So that's how you're gonna tell which one of these speakers has more bass, but overall, they both play equally as loud. I was super, super surprised. The boss efficiency numbers are maybe inflated a little bit, but I think the Rockford efficiency numbers are a little underrated because there's a big difference in efficiency between these two speakers on the paperwork. That's why I like to bench test everything, but head to head, they came really close. Okay, when the bass drops, I want you to pay attention to the dots over here on this side as they hit the top and that'll let you know which 6x9 produces more bass. You have to watch carefully because this is close. Rockford's up first.
wasn't playing pink noise, the speakers sounded almost identical on the RTA and by ear. Pink noise with all high bits. Okay, to say that I'm surprised would be the understatement of the year. I thought, hands down, Rockford was going to walk all over the Boss Audio. I thought it was going to outperform it in every category. Loudness, bass, everything, everything, everything. I loaded the speakers up in the same enclosure, hooked them up to the same amplifier bridged, I even flipped the RCAs to make sure that the input gain was the same on both sides and I measured it to make sure all things were equal. The damn speakers came out damn almost even. The Rockford edged out the boss with mid bass by a little bit. I want to say maybe one dB difference. It just had a little more mid bass. Um, and I'm not a fan of the way boss advertised their product and the false advertising and the misleading RMS power claims well they claimed that the speaker handled power and it does Rockford modestly rates theirs at 100 watts boss rates theirs at 175 watts both speakers handled double RMS with no problem you got to remember in the test I ran 400 watts RMS to each one with no crossover so that meant they were playing 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz uh, the Rockford played a little bit lower and it's pay and it's paperwork It did say that it plays almost 20 DB lower than the boss. So that was to be expected Boss claimed that their speaker was more efficient. I think boss overrated theirs a little bit in efficiency And I think Rockford underrated theirs because they played pretty damn even being that the speakers are made out of similar material the RTA came out almost the same on both with just a little more mid bass on the Rockford so you have to respect the Boss Audio Kit that it came really close to tying with the Rockford Kit and it's $200 cheaper. So everybody considers this a buy the kit, throw the speakers out, replace the speakers. You might want to take a listen. These speakers might make you happy. Um, obviously they handle power. Remember I tested them on 400 watts RMS. No crossover. So if you high pass them at 80, I don't see you blowing these things. I don't see I don't see you blowing the Rockfords. As long as you're using the DSP and you high pass both of them at 80, I don't see you blowing either of these considering I tested them at double RMS. So there's a few things uh, in the install kit. Obviously the boss is last, lacking the gasket that the Rockford has, which is no big deal because you can fix that for two or three dollars adding your own gasket. The fit and finish of both kits is identical. It even comes with the same damn screws, same damn harness. And I really, really like the harness that comes in the Rockford kit, which same harness comes in the Boss kit. Because if you clip those speaker leads on properly, they will never, ever, ever, ever fall off. So, um, I thought this was going to be a review, making fun of the Boss kit and showing how much better the Rockford kit is. It is not. It actually shows a lot of value in both these kits, but at $200 less, the Boss Kit is a contender. It's something to consider. Uh, so, hope this helps. Talk to you guys later.